it is so expensive to build these raised beds and especially if you're making them you know upward to 20 feet long it can come pricey so in this video i'm going to show you guys a creative out of the box way to build some raised beds using some really cheap materials and definitely a lot of chicken wire let's go What's going on my plant people? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, houseplants, and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And welcome to my raised beds made out of chicken wire. I don't believe anyone has built one like this before. Do correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I haven't seen it at all. I've seen people use chicken wire above it, but not using chicken wire to build the sides of it. I'm using cardboard. I'm using chicken wire, rebar, and leftover poles that I had for an old carport that is not being used. So that is the material that I've used. Oh, and zip ties, we can't forget the zip ties. That is what I use to build these beds. In the spring, you'll be happy you did. I know. Right now the ground is not frozen, very workable. From there, you're going to outline your garden bed and that is using four posts. You're gonna put two in the front, two poles, two rebar, something to guide you or show you where your raised bed is going to be. Now, this can all vary based on what size of garden beds you're going to use. I found that a two foot walkway works really good and it can also fit my seat as well, right in between. So that worked out for me. What I did have, I had a car porch here that I never really used. So what my dad did was cut down these metal carport poles and that is what I used for the framing of my raised beds. After we cut the carport metal posts down to size, that is what I used to create the framing of the raised bed. After I put the posts on from the front and the back, of course, that's when I tied the string around it to you know create the outline of the frame. Not only did I put it in the front and the back, but I also put metal posts in the middle. Mind you, this bed is 23 feet long, so I'm going to need more stability for, you know, throughout the length of the garden bed. So I did put additional, you know, metal posts on the sides of it. We're going to be adding a bunch of stuff into it later, and we definitely want that rigidity, you know, support. Ooh, four feet, two inches. That's not bad. I have long arms, so look at that. Two feet here, and I'm, I can reach on the other side two feet without overextending myself. Being that my raised beds are not gonna be as tall as I would like, I already said to everybody, start digging. So what they did was start digging my walkways a lot deeper. So as I dug out the walkways, shoveled it all out with the rototiller and a lot of labor, manpower, then they put it over here on top of this and they slowly built it up. My raised beds only come up to like well, maybe the top of my calf right below my knee. But that's going to be good enough, at least with my chair, I can sit down and I'm relatively close to the ground. Once you put your metal posts on there and you, you, know, you really start creating that outline frame, that is where you're going to get your chicken wire. Now, this whole project only took me one roll of standard chicken wire. My dad has a bandsaw or a, some sort of saw, a chop saw, and he used a whole roll while it was already rolled up and cut it in half. Now this chicken wire right here is a foot and a half. I'm assuming that the chicken wire roll is three feet long. So after you cut it in half, I doubled the amount of chicken wire that I had. So I was able to do one, two, three, four, five beds of at least 20 foot a piece, well, 20 foot long a piece with one chicken wire roll. Now being that I ran out of that carport metal posts, I resorted to rebar because rebar is really, really cheap. Or you can get the 10 foot long rebars and cut them yourself if you have a bandsaw. It's fortunate that my dad has all these materials, so I was able to go wholesale and get 10 foot long rebar and cut them to size. So that saved me a lot of money already right there. Now, what did I use to tie the chicken wire to the metal posts? Now, regular string is not gonna cut it. What I used was zip ties, but the real thick cable zip ties. I used those to take the chicken wire and tie it or zip tie it to the metal posts. Now you have to keep your posts deep enough in the ground so when you pull on the chicken wire, your post or you know, your corner ends are not going to fold. You're going to be pulling and you're going to be zip tying whatever post you have. 
Now I added the rebar after I put the chicken wire on. This is why you needed to have your main skeleton frame of posts. The corners, the middle, maybe another middle depending on how long it is, and the end. Next step is finding cardboard. Now you don't want the flimsy cardboard, you want the really thick stuff. And you know what it was even better about this cardboard? It was free. I know in my town borough that they collect recycling every two weeks. So every two weeks that everyone outside would be putting out their cardboard. And that's when I drove around and I took everybody's cardboard and my dad did the same thing for me. Now for those areas of the cardboard that is not thick, I doubled, tripled, quadrupled the amount of cardboard that I put down in between the dirt and the fence. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, how long is this cardboard going to last before it breaks down? To be honest, I don't really know. I know that cardboard will break down over time. This is just to buy me some time. And frankly, it's gonna be doing me a good job. It's gonna take a while before this cardboard breaks down, especially if you layered multiple pieces. Over time, we're going to be adding more stability. We're gonna be adding more cardboard. We're gonna be adding other wooden pieces or any other elements that we can use to stabilize our garden beds. Now, after you put your cardboard, chances are that the cardboard is gonna be flopping over being that you didn't fill in your raised beds enough. So once you have a good amount of soil on the inside, what I did was I just raked some of the soil from the center out and that stabilized my cardboard. And then I just built from there. So as you're pushing the soil to the sides of the bed, it's catching onto the cardboard and then it's straightening up. Look at that. Next thing you know, you have a raised bed made out of chicken wire, rebar, metal posts, and cardboard. I mean, who would have thought that this would be possible? I guess we'll find out in the springtime whether or not this has held me off throughout the entire winter. But if it has, and I think it will, because I'm going to be continually adding cardboard or adding more stability over time, I think this is going to work out great. This is why I worked on it in the fall time because I knew that it was going to take a little bit longer to get this done. And it, but it was all good because at least I know for springtime it is all going to be ready. Let me know down in the comments below if you have some raised beds or you've been thinking about adding some raised beds to your garden. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did enjoy this video and you want to show me some love then don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Also if you haven't already then don't forget to subscribe. I drop a video every week and then some in between. Don't forget about that notification bell because if you don't hit that bell you won't know when I'm dropping a video. And last but not least you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm on there all the time. I drop some memes, a, lot, a little bit of the personal side and a lot of funny stuff. So until the next episode, one day at a time, one plant at a time, and I will see y'all later. Peace and love. Wait, is that one of my hens there? Dude, Ren, why are you in my raised bed? We cannot do that.